Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day which the Lord has made. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to daily die to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which was in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you of, as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve, that he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. <clears throat> but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. 
Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you believe in butterflies? I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, it's hard to believe that it is just a week ago when we celebrated the glory of the palms that a few days later, in fact, 17 services later, <laughs> not that we're counting, we've arrived at the glory of the resurrection, the perfect day for the perfect feast. We are all butterflies, and the earth is our chrysalis, so says Leanne Taylor. We, we all seek the meaning of Easter. We try to see this feast and live it out in context. We learn from our environment. We learn from nature. You see the Easter window at Grace with the risen Christ in the center. You will see to the left at the bottom the butterfly, an ancient symbol of resurrection. 
It would seem that resurrection and rebirth, that they have been built into nature. We witness it in the birth of spring. True life, all life, every life, it would seem, is followed by death. But so too, after that very predictable death, there is a new kind of life. It's built into nature. It's built into our lives. Small wonder the creator of the world, who raised Jesus from the dead, would reveal the divine bias for resurrection in the world that God created so many years ago. So too, ancient myth has wrestled with this death-resurrection reality. Look again to our Easter window on the other side. There we find the phoenix rising from the ashes. Another window in the nave of grace displays this very same Easter symbol. But my friends, one window alone proclaims the great meaning which the risen Lord is offering you and me today, here and now. On that window, on that side of the nave, there is the risen Christ, who is sharing words from John's Gospel, resonating with profound meaning for us today. His Easter message, because I live, ye shall live. Because Jesus lives, we too shall live. That is Christ's singular word for all of us today as we celebrate this great feast. For you see, God's plan not only includes all of nature out there, but you and me in here. And if we take this to heart, this great Easter message, we are changed not only for the future, but here and now, today. Live a life that is risen with Christ and everything changes. Just ask that early Christian community who changed from being a fearful flock to a courageous company. And you say nothing happened? To say nothing happened, that's what's unbelievable to me. I can believe in resurrection. I cannot believe that nothing happened. That's ludicrous. No, live a life that has risen with Christ and everything in your life will change. Fears are lessened. Why? For Christ is risen. Anxieties are reduced. We are risen with him. Goals are sharpened. I'm never walking alone again in this life. The world has changed, for we no longer live only for ourselves. Purpose is reborn. Because I have a future now beyond all imagination. And all because life changed for us 2,000 years ago. Every Easter, I read these few words written by Malcolm Mugridge, who wrote about the end of life as he was drawing close to the end of his own life. He writes, For myself, as I approach my end, I find Jesus' outrageous claim for resurrection ever more captivating and meaningful. He writes, I feel like a butterfly, released from its chrysalis stage and ready to fly away. Are caterpillars told of their impending resurrection? How in dying they will be transformed from poor earth crawlers into creatures of the air with exquisitely painted wings? If told, do they believe it? I imagine the wise old caterpillars shaking their heads. No, it can't be. It's a fantasy. Yet, in the limbo between living and dying, as the night clocks tick remorselessly on, I hear those words. I am resurrection, and I am life, and feel myself to be carried along on a great tide of joy 
and peace. I am resurrection and I am life, which means you are resurrection and you are life. Resurrection is real and Easter is today. Live it out today. Be changed today and thereby be changed forever. Remember what those who first were to reach the sepulcher on that first earth Easter morning, remember what they would discover. They would discover the clothes that wrap Jesus, but not Jesus himself. You see, only the chrysalis remained. The butterfly is free and has flown beyond the restrictions of the sealed tomb and death's door. And because he lives, we too shall live. Amen. In the power of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the holy churches of God, for Ruth, our bishop, for Michael, our presiding bishop, 
and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for St. James Santee Episcopal Church in McClellanville, in the Church of the Province of the West Indies, may your church offer the light of hope in places of despair, and the refreshment of peace in places of chaos and war. Hear our prayer. For this holy gathering and all the holy people of God, that Christ may fill us with the joy of his holy resurrection. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, for the baptism of James Graham Akers, hear our prayer. For all nations and peoples, for justice, mercy, and peace in all the world, for all who serve at home or overseas in the military or in mission or outreach work, for Sam, Dennis, Henry, Brian, Keen, Maxim, Louisa, Edward, Justin, Andrew, Brad, Jake, Maxwell, Drew, Legree, Kurt, Thomas, Henry, Griffin, Will, Boost, Trevor, Matthew, Christian, and Jack. May we stand with the Christ in his suffering and find freedom in his resurrection. Hear our prayer. For all those in need, the homeless and the unemployed, travelers and prisoners, May we recognize in their faces the true image of your Son. Hear our prayer. For ourselves, our families, and all those we love. For an all in special need, for Karen, Michael, Betty, Nancy, Andy, Rob, Rhett, Maya. Antonia, Chris, Mary, Terry, Clifford, Randy, Martha Ann, Chris, Rocky, Jimmy, Donald, Len, Bob, and Tyler. Hear our prayer. For those who died in the faith of Christ and for the promise of resurrection to be fulfilled, for George Merkel and all those in whose memory flowers or music have been given, hear our prayer. Transforming God, lead us in all our efforts as we seek the renewal of this holy place by the power of the Holy Spirit. Transform our life, empower our work, and enrich our capacity to serve. As we have known your desire to save, may we also know your power to transform. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Please be seated. Welcome to Grace Church Cathedral, whether present in the cathedral or the garden or Hanahan Hall or watching online, thank you for your presence this day. Um, and I mentioned the services we've had this week. There will not be a 5.30 service this evening. Thank you, risen Lord. Uh, if you'd like to come, please enjoy it. We will be elsewhere. A special word of thanks to all who have contributed to the beauty of our liturgies this week. Look around, listen, you know who you are. We are grateful for all that you've done to bring us to this very special place. Thank you for your leadership in this place. Thank you. Uh, we didn't include in the prayers um, your favorite college basketball team, um, but for a price we can do anything. Sorry, just, just kidding. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, shine in your hearts that you may know the joy of his resurrection and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Go forth in the name of the risen Christ.